This is Pam Grove again from, Pre from Preserving Life Ministries. And today we're gonna have fun in the kitchen. I've got my two favorite pieces of equipment with me because we're gonna make mango applesauce. How many of you don't love delicious mangoes and juicy apples? Uh, the ingredients that we need are eight pounds of apples. Now the best apples to get are a mixture of apples. They add a unique flavor and texture to your applesauce. So I would recommend you buying two, three, four different types of apples and you will really be pleased with the results. We need three pounds of ripe mangoes. We need to peel and chop those mangoes. But for the apples, we just need to wash them and we're gonna treat them with a little bit of lemon juice to keep them from turning brown. We need some water and we need some eight, we need eight pint-sized canning jars with their lids and their rings. We need one fourth cup of lemon juice and one tablespoon of salt. For the directions, we're going to wash and quarter our apples and cut them into large pieces and we're going to put them into our juicer steamer. We're also going to peel and chop our mangoes and then we're going to prepare our boiling water canner. And to prepare that canner, we're going to fill it a half full with water. We're going to put it on a burner under medium heat and allow it to simmer while we're preparing our applesauce. We're also going to pre prepare our juicer steamer by adding water to the base pot of the juicer steamer and putting it on medium low heat to simmer. Now once we've chopped our apples, we're going to put them in a lemon water with a little bit of salt to keep them from turning brown. We're going to rinse those apples and then put them in the juicer steamer. Once they're tender, in the and we're gonna add our mangoes to that. Once our apples and mangoes are tender, we're going to take the apples and mangoes and transfer them to the food mill to be cranked out into applesauce. The steamer has also made juice for us. We're gonna take that juice and bottle it into jars, and we're gonna process that in a water bath canner for 10 minutes, and we'll have a delicious drink to serve on the afternoons when we're really thirsty and we want something nice other than water. And because our altitude is less than 1,000 feet and we're not using any um, pressure on a pressure canner, we don't have to worry about a weight. The water bath canner is all that we need for this process. Once the, the jars are processed for 20 minutes, we're going to take them out. We're going to put them on a mat in a place that is draft free and allow them to sit for 24 hours to cool. After the 24 hours, we will check the seal on the jar. We will wipe the rims of the jar and put them away for storage. Now let's get started with making mango applesauce. Hello friends, this is Pam Grove with Preserving Life Ministries and we are here today to make mango applesauce. But before we get started in the kitchen, I wanna to talk to you about a few safety tips. One is that we need to cover our hair when we come into the kitchen. Always wear a hairnet because it's very difficult to eat food when you find little hair particles in it. That is one safety um, measure that we always want to take. Our next safety measure is to wear some gloves. The gloves will actually protect our hands from acids. The gloves also protect other people from bacteria that could be lurking on our hands even though we wash them. So wash them thoroughly with so soap and water and don't appear gloves. Our next safety tip is always keep some pot holders handy because as you can see our pots are boiling, they're very hot and we want to have something to pick them up with so that we're not burned. Well let's get started on our recipe. We have already this morning prepared some things for you. We have chopped some delicious mangoes here. Look at that, that looks so good. We've washed our apples and to wash our apples we use lemon juice and salt. For every gallon of water, we want to put a quarter cup of lemon juice and two tablespoons of salt in the water. Put your apples in that cold water and let them soak. And you'll find when you come back that residue will be floating on top of the water. That's a little of the wax and some of the pesticides or insecticides that were sprayed on the fruit. Rinse your apples very well. No need to dry them. They are ready now to make applesauce. Our next step is to take our apples and to chop them. We're going to process our applesauce in a juicer steamer. And this one is already ready so you can see the steps as we go along. But to prepare your apples, there's no need to peel or core them. You don't even have to take off the stem. You just cut the apple into quarters, then into eighths, and put them right into the pot. The next thing we're going to do is cut our mango. And most of us know how to cut a mango. You slice the mango around the pit. And then you 
score the mango and scoop it out with a spoon. And that's what we have done with these. And you put all of that into the juicer steamer. But when, if it's already operating like this one is, you wanna lift it with the lid away from your face so that the steam is away from you. And then open it up and look inside. We've already put our apples and mangoes in there. Doesn't that look delicious? Now we gotta stir this halfway through the process because the apples on the bottom will cook faster than the ones on top. So we wanna lift from the bottom and turn them over so that all that delicious goodness get steamed evenly because we're gonna take this pulp, put it into the food mill and make applesauce. Now there's another trick that this juicer steamer will do for us and that's make juice. At the same time it's softening our fruit, it is making a delicious drink for us. So if you would just wait a moment, I'm gonna get a jar and we're gonna put that under the spout and we're gonna see how much juice we've already made with this juicer steamer. All right, we are going to put this um, glass, this jar, underneath this spout. As you can see, the juice is already collecting in the spout. And my vision isn't so great, so I'm gonna put on my glasses to make sure I can see what I'm doing. So the first thing we would do, this clamp is normally on the spout, and I took it off just to make it easy for me to open the cork on the end. So you open the spout on the end carefully, because the juice is very hot, and put the spout into the jar, and you will see that the juice is very hard, I'm sure for you to see, that the juice is running out. And I'm gonna leave that there and let it continue to fill on its own. I'm gonna move these measuring cups so as it's filling, you can see the jar filling up with juice. Now, these apples are almost ready for processing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the handles of this pot and tilt it a little bit and let the juice come out a little bit faster. How about that? Doesn't that look delicious? Now when we get close to full, I'm gonna get another jar and put under the spout. And this juice will require one quarter inch headspace, and we're there now. So now that this jar is full, what we do is we put the cork back on the end and put the clamp back on to make sure this hot juice, we don't lose any and spill it all over the counter. Now, we can safely lay that to the side and allow it to rest while the juice is finishing. But the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna scoop the pulp out of here, put it in the, to the food mill and make applesauce. In order to do that, I'm gonna have a big spoon and a bowl. So I'm just gonna turn and take this bowl from behind me. Well, I'll take this one. Look at that, everything's nice and soft, and the food mill will not have any problem processing this into applesauce. This is something that I like doing with my grandchildren. Not only do they like eating it, but they like making it. They like knowing that they had a hand in the process of something that goes into their bellies. So once we dump that in, I'm gonna fill up the hopper. Now, some people don't like to fill it up, because it takes a little bit longer to process that way. But I don't mind filling it all the way up with the yummy goodness of the apples and the mangoes. So here we go. We've gotten that full. I'm just gonna put the lid on the top of the pot and take the spoon out of there. And here we go. With the food mill, out of one end will come the, the uh, waste products, the seeds and the um, stems and the skin and out of the front end is going to come the applesauce so all we have to do at this point is crank now I'm going to be very careful with cranking and when you crank we need a pusher to help that fruit go down into the food mill now I've got this strapped onto the counter but it doesn't want to stay there because the counter is a stone and sometimes you have to put something rubber underneath the food mill and the counter to hold it in place. But I think we're doing okay here. Now you see the applesauce coming out of the food mill. And that looks so delicious. And out of the other end, you can see the waste starting to come. But you know what's really interesting about the waste? You can run it through the food mill twice because there's just as much nutrition in there the second time as there was the first. 
So we will continue to do this. And once we finish this batch, we're gonna jar it. We will put it into the jars, put those jars into the hot pot and process them. So we will be back with you. I'm gonna finish cranking this batch and we'll be right back with you when we're ready to jar. Okay, now that we have um, worked on our applesauce and we've gotten it through the food strainer, it is time to jar our applesauce. Now, have you ever looked at, seen anything so beautiful as this mango applesauce? We tried it, it was delicious. The mangoes brought out the sweetness in the apples and it's just marvelous. So what we do to put it in a jar is we prepared our jars by washing them in hot soapy water and rinsing them well. Then we put our water bath canner on to boil and we put our jars inside to keep them nice and warm. Because our applesauce is warm, our jars need to be warm also. Once we take these jars out and fill them up, we can put them back into the canner to process them. There's no need to have a separate pot on, on standby. So here we go. I've taken one out already. It's nice and warm. So I'm gonna take my ladle and I'm gonna ladle applesauce into this jar. Now we have headspace. We talked about headspace in one of our other videos. And what headspace is, is the amount of space between the food and the top of the jar. And for our applesauce recipe, our headspace is one half inch. So as, after we fill the jar, I'm gonna show you how to measure that one half inch. So look at that, isn't that pretty? We're almost there with just a little bit more to go. Okay, I think we might be a little bit over, but let's take a measurement and, take, and see. Now, we take the funnel out, and I'm just gonna set this to the side on a paper towel I have ready for that. And if you look at the jar, it's quite full, so I'm a little bit over my headspace. So what I would do in that instance is take a spatula and remove a little bit of the applesauce at a time until I get down to the one half inch headspace. Now remember, the, lid, the rim of this jar will have to be wiped clean before we put the lid on it. So that's almost one half inch. I'm gonna get a paper towel and I'm gonna wipe off the rim just temporary, you know, for, um, the me purpose of measuring, and then I'm going to clean the rim when we're ready to put the lid on. So now, this is our measuring device, and the measuring device has little stairs. Each stair has a measurement on it. This is the one inch measurement. In the middle is the one half inch. We're gonna take that middle stair, and we're gonna put it on the rim of the jar. The tip of the measuring device should touch the food in the jar. And with me tilting it, you may not be able to see that. And it's right at the tip of the food. If I take it out, you can see the applesauce on the tip. That shows me that I'm at my one half inch. Then what I would do is take a wet, a wet paper towel and I would wipe the rim of this jar. And you wanna wipe the rim only and make sure that there's no residue left on the rim. Once you do that, you take your magnet, pick up your lid, because you don't wanna to touch the underside of the lid. That's the part that you washed very well and rinsed well, and that's the sealing agent. So you don't want your fingers on the sealing agent. You put the lid down on the jar, put one finger at the side, and just pull the magnet off. Once you've done that, you're going to take your ring, and you're gonna put the ring on the jar. To do that, just hold on to your jar, Put your ring on and tighten it until you feel that it needs to be tightened. Then one half turn, one turn, and that's it. That's called fingertip tightening. Once you have done that, your jar is ready to place in your canner. Now we're going to take a break because I have quite a bit of applesauce here to can, and we're going to come back to you when we're loading these jars into the canner so you can see what that is like. And then we're going to talk about processing time. So we'll see you in just a few minutes. Okay, hey folks, we were jarring applesauce, but there's one step that I forgot to give you, so I'm gonna give you that step now. 
With our measuring device, it is also a spatula. And with our food products, we always need to check for air bubbles and remove those before we process them. The reason for that is as we need to remove, bring as much air as possible out of the food product to the top of the jar so that once it's processed, and it begins to boil in the jar, the air can escape from underneath the lid. So thereby we take the back side of our, our measuring device and we go down the sides of our glass jar. You never want to do this with a knife or metal objects because they can inadvertently cause cracks in the glass. And you won't know that until it goes into the canner and the canner comes to a boil, glass cracks and you lose all your delicious food. So make sure that you use the proper measuring device Plastic or wood is best, or even a spatula, and go along the sides. And as you do that, you will see the air bubbles that were on the sides of the jar are disappearing. Now, you don't have to get every single one out, but you want the biggest ones to be removed. And once you do that, you're going to wipe the rim of your jar again, and you're going to put your lid on, and then you're going to process it. One more thing I wanted to give you a hint about. You see that this jar does not meet headspace requirements it cannot be processed. Too much air would remain in this jar, it couldn't be removed, and there's a possibility that mold would grow on this product. So the best thing for you to do with this is enjoy it. Put it in the refrigerator, let it cool off, and then take a spoon and you can eat it right out of the jar. It's delicious. So now it's time for us to take these jars and put them into our pot and process them. So I'm gonna put down this spatula and we're gonna carefully open our canning pot. This is the water bath canner. In the bottom of this canner, we have a rack. If you don't have a rack, you can use a common dish towel or you could line it with pot holders, but you need something in the bottom of the canner to make sure that the jars are not touching the bottom of the pot. Therefore, we're going to, we have our rack in there and now we're going to put these jars in for processing. What we do is we use our jar lifter and we carefully lift our jar by the lid and sit it down inside of our canner. Now the, perp the um, pot should be filled half filled with water. The water should be the same temperature as the food in the jar. And what you also need to know is that once the jars are in the canner, the water needs to cover the jars by one to two inches, leaving enough room in the pot for the pot to boil and not boil over. So if you look down into our pot here, we've got a jar in there. There's one inch of water above that jar, and that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So now that we've finished doing this, this is going to process. This is going to come to a boil, process for 20 minutes, and then we're going to take the jars out. Now, I know that you know what a boiling pot looks like, so we're not going to make you wait for that. We're going to come back in just a few minutes and take these out at the end of the processing time. So see you in a few minutes. All right, friends, we are back and our mango applesauce has processed and now we're going to take it out of the canner. This is where we really need to be careful. So again, we're going to open the lid away from us to make sure that the steam escapes, but not in our face. Then we're going to carefully put away our lid so that no one gets burned. And I have a hot pad here for that purpose. Now, we want to take the jars out of the canner carefully and put them on the hot pad. If you have a ceramic surface or um, a stone tile on your countertop, you want to make sure you pad it well for your jars because you don't want the heat transfer and the cold stone to come together. That will cause a breakage in your jars. So as we have six jars in here and we're going to take those out. One thing you need to remember about taking your jars out of the canner, don't move them once you put them in a, in a draft free area because they need to settle for 24 hours so that that's, that seal will um, be created on the lid of the jar. After 12 to 24 hours, what you want to do is you want to take your jar of finished um, cooled product and I'm going to take a jar from behind me to show you how to do this. You're going to take the jar and take off the ring only. Once you take the ring off, you're going to take make a, a sink of hot soapy water and you're going to wash this area, the sides and the bottom of the jar. The reason for that is that during the canning process, when the air is being removed from the jar, little 
spatters of the liquid that is in the jar will deposit outside of the jar and around this ring area. If you don't wash it and you put it in a cool dark place, it will grow mold underneath the ring. So the best thing to do is to wash it before you store it and that way you don't have to come back later and realize, oh, there's mold on the outside of my jar. The mold does not get into the jar, but it doesn't look very appetizing on the outside of the jar either. So the last thing you do after 12 to 24 hours is wash your jars. Now you don't really have to dry them. What I do is I wash them and I leave them on a pad like this for, for another couple hours or so and let them air dry. Once they air dry, I put them back into the box that I purchased them in and I label the box with the name of the product that is in the jar and the date that I canned it. And then when you put those boxes on your shelf, you can stack them and you can see that date right in front of you. You can see what you have in the box and you, there's no guesswork. Whenever you wanna go and get something to eat, you can read that label and say, oh, I want some applesauce today and pull out a jar of applesauce and then make sure you rotate your food. The next time you can mango applesauce, you want to put your new product to the back of the shelf and you want to make sure the, the older product is to the front so that it gets used first. That way, nothing will expire on, on you. You will have fresh food all the time and you'll be able to rotate out and store your food. Remember friends, God loves you and we do too. We will see you at our next episode when we will be canning pineapple tidbits. God bless.